Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Thursday, May 23rd. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in exactly 100 days. The game against Michigan in 191 days. Today is one of those days when I hit a whole different show plan. We're going to talk all about the Drew Weatherford private equity thing and how that was probably like the worst idea in the history of college football. And then something even better came along. Oh boy, Jim Harbaugh has a book coming out and it is full of stuff. We're going to be talking with our buddy Tony Gerdeman about all that. Tony, the book is called The Price, What It Takes to Win in College Football's Era of Chaos. I, I almost don't know where to begin, but this is one of these things where sometimes you just read a paragraph and it's like, okay, I get exactly where this book and these authors are coming from. Obviously, this is something of a... Uh, a, a book that Harbaugh is on board with, participated in. So this, I think, this paragraph, I think the tone here probably gives you a good sense for where this book is coming from. I will read from an expert excerpt published on CBSSports.com. At the end of a raucous national championship parade before tens of thousands of adoring fans, Harbaugh, true to his quirky, inquisitive nature, invoked, from memory, part of the St. Crispin's Day speech from King Henry V, as written by William Shakespeare, inserting as few of his stars at the top. J.J. McCarthy, the MVP, Corum and Sainerstil, Keegan and Zinter, Jenkins and Barnett. Be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall be the good this story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by. From this day to the ending of the world, but we in it will be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be here ne'er so vile. This day shall gentle his condition, and gentlemen in Engl England, now abed, shall think themselves accursed that they were not here, and hold their manhood cheap, whilst any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. Team 144, we salute you, a band of brothers. Thank you. Tony, your thoughts. Um, a lot of thoughts. Uh, one, if we're going to keep it to Shakespeare, can I please drink some poison? Uh, this <laughs> is a bit much, but, um, overall, you know, you, you see the story, the, the book, and it's just a, as it says, a tiny excerpt, uh, written by Armin Katayan and, and John Talty. Katayan is a many time New York, New York Times bestseller. Talty is a, a college football reporter, um, who has written books before. And so it's like these are two very legitimate people. And then, you see like the, the, what it takes to win in college football's era of chaos. And you see like Jim Harbaugh's involved and, or they're talking you know, to me, if you want to talk about the era of chaos, you're probably not going to be able to talk to Jim Harbaugh about the actual chaos. You're just going to be able to talk to him about what he's been through and, and the story that he wants to, to, to give you in as much detail as he wants to give you. And so this whole thing, uh, this, this excerpt here is very, very pro Harbaugh and, uh, from his perspective and his attorney's perspective. And, um, I didn't know that we needed to, to have some Shakespeare in here, but apparently we did. And that kind of just gives you an idea of, boy, look at this, uh, look at this man coming from the heart. Um, uh, clearly intelligent can recite things and uh how could you how could you think anything that, that 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 he would do anything wrong and the rest of this excerpt continues to paint that as well in my opinion yeah so saint crispin's day the the speech in the play is about a holiday that used to be celebrated in england uh, the Catholic Church uh, basically removed it from the calendar in Vatican II. Harbaugh, a little more of an old school Catholic, apparently. Uh, this is the, this is a feast that celebrated twins that were martyred in the year two, two, uh, 286. And the theme of martyrdom, Tony, kind of continues throughout this book excerpt. Uh, this is a, an excerpt uh, quoting Tom Mars, Harbaugh's attorney, who has been an attorney around college football quite a bit. Quote, I will tell you this, said Mars. I told uh, Harbaugh's agent, Don Yee and Jim, as clearly as I could, more than once, more than twice, that in my opinion, if he stayed at Michigan, the COI, which is the community, uh, Committee on Infractions from the NCAA, is going to punish Jim under the vicarious coach's responsibility legislation, and he's de dealing with a COI that's clearly manifested bias against him. 
He's going to sit out four games, maybe six, and whatever we do, the COI is going to find him guilty. I think my big takeaway from this, not only is Jim Harbaugh the victim, but Jim Harbaugh, the head of the Michigan coach, uh, the Michigan football program for a decade, feels like this is, this is just a person whose stuff is happening to and stuff is happening around. And it's just he's he's like this NPC, just like, well, I'm just I'm here. But all, you know, all the other all this is just happening around me. And I'm I'm just here and there's nothing I can do about it. Clearly. And the um, the, the the committee on infractions has a clearly manifested bias against him based on evidence. I, I'm, I'm assuming that they have found. And so I guess any, any good defense lawyer would say, you know, if we can just pick up and leave, let's do that. You know what? We're done here at court. Your honor, have a good day. We're no longer going to participate. We're going to go to the NFL and that you're, you're never going to lose a case like that. If you just uh, walk out on it. And so you've got that. It, it is a very, it paints him very much as a victim. And when, when you talk about like the, the story, the, the gist of the book is how to win in uh, college football's era of chaos. Right. And so it paints this, in my opinion, in, in the way I'm reading it is like Jim Harbaugh was able to win like this when there was, he was able to overcome all of these things that people were doing to him. And still lead his team to a national title. And he's like, wow, you know, it is crazy. NIL, transfer portal, all of that, man. It's just a crazy time. And then you got the committee on infractions trying to bust up your joint for whatever. And boy, you're, you were able to do deal with that and still win a national title. And so, um, yeah, it was like a championing what he was able to accomplish without acknowledging that he was creating or was. Um, allowed this nest of um, this rat king to develop underneath them and get all tangled. And um, you've got the NCA involved and you've got the NCA, you know, wanting text messages, wanting emails, constantly knocking on your door and just really, just really, really being annoying. And he overcame that. He was able to overcome the annoying NCAA and, and also Tom and annoying athletic director who clearly didn't have his back. Ward Manual does not come off great in this, which if you are reading a book from Jim Harbaugh's perspective, yeah, you would expect Ward Manual would probably not come off great in this. And, you know, Manual, if you are coming at it from not Jim Harbaugh's perspective, does feel like a little bit of a sympathetic figure where, you know, he talks about the fact that he wants to bring Harbaugh back, but Harbaugh has looked, you know, flirted with the NFL three years in a row and is very clearly interested in going to the NFL again here. And they put a big contract on the table and Oh boy, Tony, boy, how, how many times did we hear how badly Jim Harbaugh wanted to sign that, but oh, he just couldn't do it. And it's just, oh, these one little thing, you know, just the small, the small issues of, well, hey, if I, you know, face major NCAA sanctions as a result of my actions, uh, you know, could I, could I be punished for that? Or can I just get all of my money, please, anyway? Small issues like that. Um, there was also, as you mentioned very briefly there, the, uh, the NCAA request for cell phone records, that was maybe the single most interesting piece uh, of this whole thing in terms of a little bit of how the sausage is getting made behind the scenes. Of course, the NCAA is still in that investigatory process, trying to figure out where things stand with that Connor Stallions investigation. It says, in the wake of the Connor Stallions science dealing investigation, NCAA enforcement had made yet another sweeping request for Harbaugh's school-issued and personal cell phone records dating back 18 months. In response, Harbaugh's attorney, Tom Mars, wrote a stinging email saying he would need to review 6,199 emails plus texts and oh, by the way, your request is illegal under Michigan employment and privacy laws, quote, outrageous and offensive and without probable cause, close quote. Uh, and it wasn't just Harbaugh. The NCAA had demanded similar records from the entire coaching staff only to drop that request. So I guess that might be the single most interesting piece of information in all of this, because I think, you know, I, there were there were lots of people who were, you know, sort of professionally absolutely mystified that what well, why, why hasn't he signed his why hasn't he signed his contract? And it's like, well. Because the, because he would like to beat the posse out of town. That was that was pretty clearly the explanation back then. That has pretty clearly been laid out as the explanation now. I'm sure there will be lots of clutching of pearls and shock among people who were so sure he loved dear old alma mater so much that why wouldn't he come back? I don't. I just don't understand. But other than that, I feel like the this maybe is you know one of these one of a really interesting look inside what 
you know, what that investigation is trying to do and maybe where that investigation is going to get hamstrung a little bit in terms of trying to get down to the truth. And, you know, Jim Harbaugh's long protestations about how he never, he knew, never knew anything about anything about, you know, he knew, he knew nothing about nothing for, you know, for the whole multiple year process of the Connor Stallions thing, you know, that may be something that really hamstrings the investigation to a certain degree that, you know, well, sure, we would love to, but we can't. And also it's illegal. And also, how dare you? And also, good night, everybody. Um, don't call us again. And now your your number is now blocked on, a, on all of the Harbaugh cell phones. Uh, so you can't even get a hold of them if you wanted to. Uh, the there, There's other portions of this as well that really um, – paint Harbaugh in a, in a champion light and Ward Manuel in, in a different light. And one of the paragraphs is talking about how um, Jim Harbaugh is talking to a longtime friend and he tells this long friend, longtime friend, he wants to remain at Michigan, but believed Ward Manuel would not be the advocate he needed in his corner. And how many times have we heard this from, you know, whether it's a uh, reporting or, or fans just, Putting Ward Manuel as the bad guy on all of this, when Ward Manuel has been trying, has been putting a contract in front of Jim Harbaugh through this this entire time, with a rolling number of making him you know eleven million dollars a year or whatever, and just you know what I'm not going to sign it is as was advised by attorneys. You know what? Hey, uh, if you do sign it, there's going to be some NCAA infractions because of again this bias, and so maybe. Maybe just end up doing what you've been trying to do for the last three years and head off to the sunset in the NFL, and which was no surprise when it eventually went that way. But the um, if you don't have to give up information, you don't have to give up text messages, and if you don't have to possibly incriminate yourself, you don't know what's on that. Probably nothing. If you can just avoid that altogether and then head off, See, and also then make like $16 million a year for however many number of years. It seems like the smart decision. And yet it was still portrayed in a way as like, yeah, boy, I'd really like to leave. But this Ward Manual, he's really chapping my butt. Well, The Price, What It Takes to Win in College Football's Era of Chaos will release on August 27th. The Notice of Allegations from the NCAA will release on Tate TBD. We will, I'm sure, be following both of those releases very closely. When they get closer, give me a lot to talk about. And this is going to be a fascinating conversation. As, as much as this, everyone wants to kind of hand wave this and tell you it's it's all going to go away and it's not, you know, this is not going to be nothing. We'll find out. We'll find out how nothing or not nothing it is when the notice of allegations comes out. And then, of course, the NCAA punishment or punishments, whatever they end up being, uh, you know, six to eight months after that. We will find it all. And uh, whenever we do, we will talk about it here on youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle and at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We still have uh, the longest running thread in the history of our board going on uh, on uh, on the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, all about the Michigan situation. One of our board members got word that there was something strange happening up in Michigan and uh, posted about that a little while before the Connor Stallions news broke. And then, oh boy, did that blow up. So that, is, that will, I'm sure, continue to be a very active thread on our board. But of course, we talk Ohio State talk, uh, you know, barbecuing and all sorts of other stuff, vacations, all all the fun college football message board stuff you know and love. It's all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. And uh, of course, you can also find us at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.